All right. Thank you guys, everybody, for being here today. Welcome to the Art of Healing with your hosts, Dr. Judy Jasek of Animal Healing Arts and myself, Matt Rowe of Parsley Pet. During our show, we are talking about your pet's health, raw feeding, and alternative treatments for cancer, unexplained illnesses, and supporting your pet's natural ability to heal. Welcome, Dr. Judy, to this week's show. Thanks, Matt. Happy to be here as always. Yeah, this one's going to be fun. And this is, we're going to talk about a topic today that I think was really hot at the end of last year, and that's dilated cardiomyopathy. And you may have heard it as DCM. And so there's a big stir that came up with dogs that were raw fed, potentially leading to DCM. And then they started to talk about kibble companies and all of this type of stuff. And really, I, you know, that's why we wanted to talk about it today is I thought I, I, you don't hear it as prevalent. You don't see it show up in as much of the media today. And so we want to talk about it. We want to make sure that your pet is healthy. And if you have concerns about DCM, hopefully we relieve a couple of those today as well. So Dr. Judy, tell me about dilated cardiomyopathy. Okay, well, there's actually a couple different types of cardiomyopathy. So, you know, cardio means heart, obviously, and myopathy, so the, car, the heart is a, a muscle. Um, so myopathy just means that there's an issue with the heart uh, muscle. And when it's dilated cardiomyopathy, it means that the muscle gets weak and sort of stretches out. So the chambers in the heart actually get bigger and the muscles don't contract as efficiently. So the heart can't okay. do its, don't do its job. Um, you know, okay. you can imagine like the muscle fibers just stretching and getting real lax, like a rubber band that's stretched out and can't regain its original um, size and shape. That's sort of what happens when the blood goes into a chamber in the heart. Those muscles are supposed to contract and push the blood out and back out into the body. And so with dilated cardiomyopathy, basically the, the pump doesn't work as efficiently. All of that blood doesn't necessarily leave the chamber. And so we're not getting effective circulation. And then because of that, it makes the heart um, work harder and harder. The body sends signals to the heart like, hey, you know, we're not getting all the blood we need down here mm -hmm. in our toes. And so it sure. stimulates the heart to um, beat faster sometimes. So we'll see an elevated heart rate. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, um, you know, those muscles will wear out and you will get heart failure. Um, it yeah. just gets to the point where the, where the pump can't, can't do it anymore. Um, there's another type of cardiomyopathy where the muscles actually get thicker and the chambers okay. get smaller. So that's a, that's a little bit different, different type. Um, but you'll right. hear that uh, cardiomyopathy term basically just means that there's a, a problem with the, um, with the heart muscle. And okay. What ended up happening, um, I think the end of last year, was that somehow this um, cardiomyopathy got linked to grain-free diets. And mm. the, initial, the initial findings, and this was just not an official study. This was just observations from the cardiologists Sure. said they they said that a lot of the dogs coming in that were getting diagnosed with cardiomyopathy were eating what they called boutique diets so not mm -hmm. your veterinary recommended science diet or royal canin they mm -hmm. were eating grain free diets or raw diets or you know different diets like that so then this whole association became made between grain and cardiomyopathy. And I think this recommendation is still out there that dogs need to eat grain to keep their heart healthy. And that's incorrect. Yeah, absolutely. incorrect. 100%. It doesn't even make any sense. I mean, if you think about it logically, like how does grain help keep a dog's heart healthy, a carnivore's heart healthy? Yeah. And they, you know, at the end of last year, they kept talking about taurine. 
taurine that the dogs are deficient in taurine. And so that's causing, you know, the heart health conditions because of it. But when you look at a raw based diet, when your dog eats organ meat, it is receiving bioavailable taurine mm -hmm. in abundance because of the, you know, if they're eating organs, they're eating heart, they're eating liver, they're eating spleen, kidney, you know, a good, you know, balance of all of them. But because of that, they're receiving with a raw based diet, sufficient supplies of taurine. And so dogs don't need you know, grain in order to receive the taurine. And so do you think it's because that with kibble companies, they were putting taurine as a vitamin pack in the actual food itself to satisfy that? Yeah, that's, that's my suspicion. I mean, that was mm -hmm. my very first thought when I started hearing this was just that, well, if you just fed a raw diet, then um, there's plenty of, there's going to be plenty of taurine. So taurine's an mm -hmm. amino acid and it's abundant in fresh right. meat and fresh mm -hmm organ meat. And it, mm -hmm. that has been definitively, definitively linked to cardiomyopathy. This was discovered years ago in cats because mm -hmm. cats are obligate carnivores and cats right. were getting cardiomyopathy and they found out there wasn't enough taurine in the food. So they started mm -hmm. supplementing. And so, yes. And I think I, I suspect a couple of different things on these grain-free diets. So your grain-free kibble diets. This is not mm -hmm. raw. Feed raw. You got plenty of taurine. You're not going to have mm -hmm. any risk of cardiomyopathy at all, in my opinion. But the grain-free dry foods, all, all dry food diets are still very high in carbohydrate. The ones that don't have grain have things like beans and peas and lentils and potato and all these other carbohydrates. And right. sometimes these plants, I think, can have substances in them that prevent absorption of some yep. nutrients and that there's um, a possibility those could be either binding toward to the taurine or mm -hmm. negatively impacting the gut lining um, so that it's not absorbed appropriately or and it's probably yeah. a combination um, of things that they just weren't putting enough in there i think the other right. grain-based diets you know you know Taurine's an amino acid. It's it's very safe. You're not going to mm -hmm. overdose on it. So they probably put in ten times what they would expect a dog would need or something. I'm just mm -hmm. guessing, um, but they put in so much that yeah. they'll they'll get enough of it. Um, right. And maybe these other companies weren't putting enough in, and some of these other ingredients might have been affecting the natural absorption, and so um, that could have been affecting the, um, the dilated cardiomyopathy, but then, then, you know, the actual studies then that started coming out, mm -hmm. um, they couldn't, they couldn't make any conclusions there. They could not definitively say that there was a link between grain or grain free diets, you know, between the grain mm -hmm. specifically and the cardiomyopathy that's right. never that's never been proven, but it has remained to be popular propaganda. And, yep. you know, this comes down to, you know, and we've, we've talked about this before, be careful about where your information is coming from mm -hmm. and what's behind it. And this is getting yeah. to be, you know, a huge issue now. Um, it, censorship is becoming rampant and it's in, in a lot of different areas. And, you know, that's not the topic of our discussion, but I just mm -hmm. want to mention that because it, it can be affecting all areas of news. So when you hear mm -hmm. a piece of information, check where it's coming from and how did that information get out there? Because I see a lot of things um, develop within the veterinary profession, such as this DCM issue, mm -hmm that are nothing but propaganda. And it's just the case that something gets said enough times, people believe it to be true. And if yeah. there's incentives for the, you know, the uh, dog food companies that produce these foods with grain in them, um, mm -hmm. you know, they want to keep selling food. So if they can make the other guys look bad, well, they're going to sell more food. So, you know, it's another yeah. thing and something doesn't make sense and eh, follow the money trail and Yes. you know, see, see who's making money, uh, you know, from right. saying that. And sometimes that'll give you a clue as to, you know, where some of this information is coming from as well. 
And I love that you said follow the money trail. And yes, we didn't want to talk about censorship today and all that type of stuff. But Dr. Judy brings up a great point. Look at where the information is coming from. So I'm going to take a step back into DCM. Is when you started to take a look at that, when we look at grain-free diets, if they're using lentils, oats, um, garbanzo beans, if they're using any one, like that's just three that I pointed out right there, have the highest levels of glyphosate in the industry. So mm -hmm. that's Roundup, that's spread on them. So now not only is your dog trying to get the proper nutrients it needs, going to a grain-free diet, meaning that you know, it's the bag of food that doesn't have any corn or it doesn't have any other types of wheat products in it that, you know, kibble companies that they shouldn't be putting in dog food. So now they're coming at it from a different angle, going after that grain-free approach, but they're actually infiltrating that diet with glyphosate. Mm -hmm. And so do you believe that glyphosate at some degree could stop the absorption of taurine or other nutrients and vitamins in your dog's system because of that heavy chemical that it was originally created as an antibiotic. Oh, antibiotic. I think, yeah, absolutely. Cause it, we know it damages the gut lining. Mm -hmm. We know that it, it has a, you know, negative effect on the ability of the gut to, to work mm -hmm. properly and right. to appropriately absorb nutrients. Mm -hmm. And we know that it contributes to leaky gut. So things get absorbed that shouldn't be absorbed. So we know right. that it directly affects digestion, normal digestion and absorption. So yeah, I think that could, you know, absolutely be a factor. And there's so many things about glyphosate. I think that we don't know. We, we have to, um, you know, all, we're always learning new things, but again, there's, there's another whole money trail there trying to keep some of that stuff quiet, but I do think that could be a huge factor in this. Okay. Um, and you, you know, in the pre-show a little bit, we were think, talking about epigenetics and I'd like to talk a little bit more about that and what your thoughts were with DCM and epigenetics and maybe mm -hmm. what is epigenetics? Well, epigenetics is the, the fact that we have some control mm -hmm. over how our genes express or which genes express. So we know there's genetic predispositions to things. They've identified genes that can contribute to certain types of cancer, for example, or even heart disease. You know, I've heard people say, oh, well, I have, you know, my family, everybody in my family gets heart disease. So I'm probably going to get heart disease. And then they probably will. But right. it's also true that you can prevent the expression of certain genes. So say you hear that certain breeds of dogs. So now with this DCM issue, um, there's been a lot of golden retrievers that have mm -hmm. been diagnosed with this. So you could say, right. well, golden retrievers are just prone to this. Okay. May be true, but what if we put those golden retrievers that may have a genetic predisposition on a healthier raw food diet mm -hmm. that helps support normal heart function. And there's even, yeah. you know, some herbs we can add in. Hawthorn berry is very, very supportive of the heart and mm -hmm. very safe. And if like we had an individual that maybe was diagnosed with, with DCM or has mm -hmm. a family history of it, that could be something that could help support the heart in addition to um, a, a healthy diet. So we can actually help prevent or modulate the expression of some of these genes. It's not, not just a, a, a given that just because we have this genetic predisposition that your dog is destined to get the DCM and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, that's great. And so you started to talk about, you know, breeds and stuff like that. Do they see DCM show up more in larger breeds, smaller breeds, or does it not even matter? It seems that it's been more in larger breeds, golden retrievers, um, you know, Doberman pinchers have been, mm -hmm. you know, known to get heart disease or be more prone to heart disease for, for sure. quite a few years. So I, and it seems to me that we, I mean, small breed dogs have their own set of heart issues or they, they can get heart issues, certain breeds, sure. your, um, your uh, uh, King Charles Cavalier Spaniels, like they mm -hmm. are prone. There's, there's some genetic predisposition, 
<clears throat> disposition to different types of um, of heart disease in them. But this particular issue, mm -hmm. I believe, has been mostly uh, large breed dogs. Okay. So then if you know that, you know, you have a large breed dog or like a golden retriever that shows more signs of this, then you would then go after a raw based diet that they're going to receive enough heart health taurine and that's bioavailable for them and all the other bioavailable nutrients by eating a raw based diet. But then Hawthorne berry, you would supplement with that. So you're basically saying, okay, if my dog is predisposed to receiving or having heart conditions, then taking these steps can help prevent or help um, influence that piece that goes into it. So then on that, on that side, epigenetically, if we feel that the individual or if that stimulus from the outside is driving towards heart conditions and we don't support that, then they're going to have more of that availability to actually come down with our heart condition. But if we start to take the steps to improve the health at that point by Hawthorne Berry and a raw based diet, then we are going to limit the chances that our dog could undergo something like that or have a weak heart or have any type of cardiomyopathy, no matter what it is, dilated or not. And so what we're saying is, is at some point that when we start to come after and start taking a look and being aware of the situations before they happen, we can do things to prevent them. Right. Right. And I do also recommend, like if, if you knew that your dog had a family history of, of heart issues of any kind, you know, getting it in every couple of years and getting that, you know, echocardiogram done, which is yeah. basically, it's just a, it's an ultrasound of the heart doesn't require any kind of sedation. Mm -hmm. um, basically, they're just looking at how the heart functions. But when you right. have that done by a cardiologist, they're going to measure all of the functional capabilities mm -hmm. of the heart. And then you'll know, you know, how well is your dog's heart functioning? And that can be really good information because if you find that something's developing in early stages, you can step it up and do even more like naturally to help, you know, to help support the heart. So it's, right. I think it's good, you know, to have that diagnostic information, especially when it's so you know, non-invasive, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're not doing an unnecessary surgery or something. It's just an imaging study. Yeah. And um, I think it's super good information. And, you know, if you started doing that, like every two years, you know, and if something did show up, you might want to do it more mm -hmm. frequently, but then you'd also have a good baseline. So you could compare yeah. back. So if you say, did it when your dog was two, and then you did it when your dog was four and there was changes, you could Right. you know, compare, uh, compare back and forth. So if it's mm -hmm. something that, um, you know, your dog is, again, has a familial history of that, mm -hmm. I think doing the diagnostics is, is a great thing to do too. Yeah, absolutely. And I had a question. So let's say my dog, Leo, we start to show signs of cardiomyopathy or something starts to come up when we do, like, let's say we do a heart scan and um, we, you know, the ectocardiogram, and they do that, and they're starting to see signs of myopathy. Can, and let's say by some crazy reason, I feed my dog kibble, which I don't, because it's it's poison. So why would I do that? So you better but, not be. Man. No, we no, have to talk. Be, yeah. You would beat me up. And so, <laughs> and really, when you look at this, but let's say I'm feeding my dog, feeding Leo kibble. And he's starting to show signs of myopathy and the vet is concerned and that type of stuff. If I switch to a raw based diet, can that begin to improve their situation or what kind of other action should I take if I notice that, or if I'm getting signs that my dog has this? You know, it actually can improve. And it used to be thought that that was not the case. And I think on the more conventional side of veterinary medicine, mm -hmm. um, that that still may be the school of thought. But I have actually uh, listened to herbalists say that 
they have reversed it with things like Hawthorne, with a good diet and things like Hawthorne yeah. Berry. Now it okay. also depends on the stage where, mm -hmm. where it's at, you know, anything that gets advanced enough is going to be hard to reverse. If right. it's in the earlier stages, I think there's actually an excellent chance of at least improving it, if not completely eliminating it. Sure. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes you might need to get your dog on a heart medication, a more conventional heart medication to help the heart function more efficiently if, if the heart can't do its job. And this is the value of the echo because they're actually going to take measurements as far as flow rates, they're gonna watch the valves work. And if they determine, the cardiologist determines that the heart just can't do its job, then your dog may need to be on, you know, some sort of conventional medication, but in the early stages, getting that diet change in doing some herbal support, I think you can absolutely improve it. You, you would want to continue to monitor that, mm -hmm. um, and see what's going on. And if it continues to progress, then, you know, you would know that you would need to take other steps to help keep the heart functioning, but, sure. um, yeah, absolutely. I think you could improve it dramatically with with the right diet and some gentle herbal support this has been incredible thank you very much for going through this and talking about dcm so if you have a dog that has an early stage dcm there's hope they're good them on a raw based diet go to hawthorne berry and look at some other herbals that can help by going to your holistic veterinarian and having a conversation but I also recommend having a conversation with Dr. Judy. So Dr. Judy, what is the best way for anybody to get a hold of you? Well, our website is ahavet.com. Our email is info at ahavet.com. And our phone number is 720-515-2421. And you'll see in the description on the show notes below is you'll actually see the website for um, for Dr. Judy and having and really taking that next step. And that link will take you to her telemedicine because she does an incredible job on her telemedicine to actually have a good a, a conversation about how best to support your dog. And you can always reach out to us at Parsley Pet at www.parsleypet.com and take a look at the nutritional blueprint and see if it's the right fit for you to ensure that you are feeding your dog all of the nutrients that it needs to thrive. So thank you, Dr. Judy, for being on the show today. I so appreciate you and all your wisdom. Oh, thank you, Matt. It's always a pleasure to be here and I love to educate. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. Thank you. And I hope everybody has an incredible Christmas. We're going to hold the show now until the first of the year. And we'll start with season three at the first of the year. So thank you guys very much. Have a wonderful holiday. And uh, we hope you and your puppies stay safe throughout this entire next couple of weeks. Bye. Bye.